This tutorial is part of the uh, advanced uh, impact simulation using Elastina course that we give uh, online at elastina-online.com. Today's topic is quasi-static simulation and stress initialization. So uh, for quasi-static initialization, there are several situations that you can encounter in which you need to initialize the problem before you do any explicit uh, time integration or impact uh, step. So for example, uh, you want to apply gravity before you do something or you want to uh, uh, apply hydrostatic pressure uh, on a submarine or you want to do bird impact on a rotating jet engine fan blade and and there are many others uh, the simplest one is is bolt, uh, bolt uh, pre-stressing so there are three ways to do this one is monotonically increasing uh, the load and then the second way is dynamic relaxation phase and the third way is multi-step analysis and particularly, for example, implicit step uh, uh, that precedes the explicit step. So monotonic increasing of the loading, that's before any action happen, you simply increase, for example, the load in a bolt and hold constant. And then the next um, load curve would be your second event. Uh, normally, this is not uh, uh, cost effective. And if you do a short duration uh, load increase, it will lead to oscillation into the system. The second way is dynamic relaxation phase, in which I'm going to give you an example today uh, about that. So dynamic relaxation phase uh, either can be done explicitly or implicitly. And the example that I'm going to show you will demonstrate how to do that. Dynamic relaxation phase is a phase of solution before time zero, before even the problem starts. Elastana will try to solve the problem for initialization by the dyna dynamic relaxation method. Normally, this method is good for linear or, or near linear problems. For example, if you take a specimen and you do tension in the dynamic relaxation phase, uh, to get the uh, stress strain curve. If you have more than about 5% straining, then you will see this method will diverge. So it's good for um, problems in which the strains are very small within the pre-stressing phase, which is most of the problems. And then the third step is implicit uh, step uh, or multi-step analysis. This is a little bit more involved. Basically, you put star interface spring back LS Dyna for the parts that you want to initialize. Uh, you put your loading. It can be implicit calculation. At the end, you're going to get what's called a Dyna in file. And the Dyna in file is an ASCII file that will have star initial stress. You can take that star initial stress and you put it into the second step in order to do the problem. Uh, Pre-loading uh, in a bolt, there are several methods. One is through a thermal, again, dynamic relaxation by doing star load thermal load curve. Uh, simply, uh, you calculate what is the expansion uh, that's going to correspond to the, uh, the loads into the problem. The second step is interference contact. Um, you can uh, use star contact interference surface to surface. Uh, the discussion on this is beyond uh, the, uh, the, um, the time permitted for this tutorial. And then the third one is stress in a solid cross section through star initial stress section. Uh, and then the fourth one is a force in a beam uh, through star initial uh, axial force beam for uh, uh, loading uh, of a beam. So, for example, I have a tire sitting on the ground and I want to apply gravity. So, basically, uh, the ground is modeled using rigid wall. So, if I look at the rigid wall forces as a function of time, it should be the weight of the tire and should be constant if gravity is acting fully. So, for example, if I put star load body Z and there's the gravity and the load curve is, as you can see, it's impulsive or a step load which is what gravity uh, is, is applied fully on Earth. Uh, so if I do this, I'm going to get oscillatory behavior when I look at the uh, reaction of the rigid wall. However, if I put two after the load curve, so the curve 
ID is 10, I put 2 after the load curve and I have an impulsive gravity, then Ellis Dana will try to solve the problem in the dynamic relaxation phase to find a state of equilibrium, if you like, in the dynamic relaxation phase of the solution. So if, I, uh, if I'm convergent in that phase and then I look at the reaction afterward in the transient phase, it should be constant. That's the weight of the tire should be constant as seen by the rigid wall. So uh, here is running of this problem so basically you will see it looks different and there is a convergence factor here so the convergence factor has to be this is the distortional kinetic energy the, con the uh, convergence factor has to be less than one over a thousand for the problem to be convergent so for example if i go up and you can see the last um the, the last thing that basically happened, which is less than one over a thousand, and the problem is convergent and it went into the solution phase. And you can see this now is a solution phase and ends with normal termination. If I post process this and I look at the rigid wall forces, again, this is a tire simply sitting on the ground and the ground is modeled using rigid wall, then I will see that with impulsive gravity, the reaction of the ground looks oscillatory and I did not do the initialization properly. However, if I do dynamic relaxation, which is putting two after the curve ID, it means that use this gravity for the dynamic relaxation phase and the transient phase as well. And in this case, I see that the weight of the tire is constant as it uh, should be.